Hey everyone, this is Joey from ESC Plus, and we are through with the first rehearsals for the countries that are participating in this year's semifinals, and we're going to take a look at the odds and how they've changed as a result of that. So everyone knows that Tel Aviv this week, everybody got to perform their first time if they were participating in the semifinal, and the press got to see it. So the press reacted uh, positively and negatively to different things, and the bookies have adjusted as a result, and as a result, our prediction tool has also been updated. So I'm going to take a look at the biggest gainers from this and then some of the countries that also decreased in their odds as a result. And I'm just going to break it down to the top three in each category. You're going to see a lot of numbers out there in terms of odds. I know some people don't really understand exactly how odds are calculated, but I'm just going to focus on the more likely countries to win and the less likely countries to win based on uh, our prediction tool. So the biggest gainers I have first and foremost, I think, is Azerbaijan. So this was a surprise that came out of the rehearsal. This sort of, to me, had the effect that Cyprus did last year when no one really knew what Eleni was going to bring to the stage. And then once she did, she went from like low part of the top 10 to being one of the favorites to win Eurovision. And while Chingis is not quite at that point yet, he certainly is trending in that direction. So. Um, our tool has brought him closer to um, the top. It's uh, He's sitting in seventh based on our tool, but it's trending upward in such a strong fashion that I not would not be surprised if this ends up being in the top five or even top three come uh, during to when we get to the semifinals. So that is our first biggest gainer. Second would be, I would say, Sweden. So John Lundvik had a great rehearsal. Um, there were minor changes to Melody Festival and staging, and I think just the the changes were received positively by most of the press, uh, and his odds to win Eurovision 2019 have increased from what was already a very strong prediction, I mean, a uh, position to be in. He was kind of in the, the top five, top three consistently, and now um, Sweden looks like they will really make a run for uh, tying Ireland for having the most Eurovision wins ever. Um, third would be Malta. I think Michaela also benefited from the wow factor in that no one really had seen this uh, song performed live before. Uh, she's avoided the pre-party circuit intentionally to really focus on the performance and get the get it right. And I think the unveiling for the you know the first part of it, you know, seeing what we saw, I think there's a lot of positive reaction and excitement around the song and Malta's chances have, have, have increased as well. So those were the three winners that I have. And I think, you know, you'll see that around, um, depending on which website or odds you're tracking. Um, and as you hear people talk, I think those three countries have benefited from their first rehearsal. Uh, where we saw some decreases, um, amongst our favorites first would be Switzerland. So I think that, um, Switzerland is sort of the opposite to Azerbaijan and in, in, in the magnitude here, because while Luca is still in our top three, he's certainly trending in the wrong direction. So it's just not something I would not the type of reaction I was expecting from the odds. Um, if you're consider considering Switzerland a real chance to win Eurovision 2019, um, I don't really couldn't really tell much from the staging as to uh, what people were expecting or. Um, why that is, but it just didn't resonate, I don't think, with uh, the people that saw it and the, the bookmakers are picking up on that. Second would be Russia. Um, this is a pretty easy one to understand. I think while Sergei hasn't really fallen too far off of our standing, um, he's also not trending in the right direction in terms of the probability of winning. Uh, I think he was just really up against a very large expectation, um, and when the staging was unveiled, uh, you know, if it didn't, really didn't live up to, if I, if you're, you know, you're the only one um, and, and that reputation that was built in 2016, I think that there was only one way to go and that was down. And so while I think it's still very much in the running and has um, a great chance of winning, um, it's, it's, it's sort of tumbled today and I would put it amongst our biggest decreases. And then last, um, and sadly, it, I would say it was is Atari um, Iceland, we have seen them kind of move up the, the scale and move closer and closer to emerging in the top five. But uh, after the first round of rehearsals, they are 
all the way down in ninth place. And I think that window of opportunity of becoming the the dark horse to dark horse, black horse, dark horse to win the uh, competition is narrowing now. And so um, maybe something will happen um, in the second round of rehearsals, but that um, is is sort of where things are taking taking right now for them. So um, with that, um, the Netherlands still remains the clear favorite to win Eurovision 2019. And um, really the next big test for Duncan is going to be when Mahmoud rehearses for the first time in Israel on Friday. And so that will be really the test to see how far Mahmoud, who is right currently sitting number two to win Eurovision 2019, how what kind of buzz could he create amongst the press and amongst whoever sees that first rehearsal to maybe influence some of the odds here? And will we have a two-way race or a three-way three -way race? Or will it stay with the Netherlands being really far out there in terms of the odds and uh, we're still waiting for someone to spoil it? But um, you can check back with us um, on Friday when we will have another update. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel um, Please click the button above to get all the notifications. Like the video, please, um, because we will start bringing updates directly from Tel Aviv on Friday, and um, hopefully we'll have some more content for you then. So thanks for watching.